was the message behind the art, which is really what you know rock and roll art is about. Conveying a message. You're not only advertising a concert, but you're giving a message across and to do it in the, the, the coolest possible way. My earliest memories and influences in rock art would have been when I was about nine or 10 years old and say 76, 77. My older brother and sister had a great record collection. I used to go in and listen to the music with them. What was more interesting to me was the art on the, the album covers. My mom would drag me out on these shopping trips and I would go to Kmart and go through the record section and flip through albums. And there was a couple records I actually bought based on the merits of the artwork itself. Moving from listening to music at home and looking at albums, I got introduced to the live concert experience. And my first concert was um, the Jerry Garcia Band. It was 1981, I went to see Jerry Garcia at the Tower Theater and it was Halloween. I looked at their records and I was like, wow, this is some really cool art. So at the time, I was at a boarding school in Pennsylvania. My roommate was from Mill Valley, California. And he said, you know, you've got to come to California to see the Grateful Dead. The following year, I flew to San Francisco. I'll never forget walking in the psychedelic shop and looking up and seeing the posters. Before this, I'd only seen album art. When I saw the posters, that was the complete, wow, this is awesome. In 1985, I loaded up my car and I drove across the country and I landed in San Francisco. And within two or three months, I had a job at the psychedelic shop. And the owner was putting on art shows with Stanley Mouse, Rick Griffin, Alton Kelly, Victor Moscoso, and Wes Wilson. And for me, it was, you know, it was like, you know, meeting my heroes. And I was amazed at how warm and welcoming and encouraging they were, you know, when I told them I wanted to be an artist. And, you know, it was Kelly, he said, go for the art, man, just, just go for it. At the psychedelic shop, I started doing little flyers and advertisements for their mail ordering uh, business. And then I went on to create a logo for the psychedelic shop. And the logo was this winged scarab. It was um, in the style of Rick Griffin, who was probably my biggest influence. So one day I'm working at the psychedelic shop and I had created this, this scarab logo. And the owner of the psychedelic shop came in and said, hey, um, Rick Griffin's outside and he'd like to talk to you. And I walked out and sure enough, he's at the counter and he's staring at this flyer that I did. And he immediately asked me, how did you come up with this idea? How long did it take you to sketch it out? And What's your inking time? So for me, having Rick Griffin ask me about my techniques was like, wow, I'm being supported by one of my heroes here. And we went on to become really close friends. I got introduced to a band named Zero, which featured John Cipollino with the Quicksilver Messenger Service. I was also taping a lot of music at the time, doing live recordings. And my in with the band was, hey, do, does anybody know an artist? And I was like, I'm an artist. And they're like, well, we need some flyers. So I started doing flyers. I went on to uh, develop some logos for them. And over the years, I did album cover art and posters. And I kind of got lured away from art again and became a sound engineer and a roadie. And that led to about three or four years on the road with Zero. I began to burn out pretty quick and decided that the road wasn't the life for me. And, knew that I needed to get back to my art. I was doing posters on the side, mainly for Steve Kimock. Working with Steve was great. Um, I basically had artistic freedom and I loved music. You know, Steve Kimock was also a guitarist in the band Zero, so I was very familiar with the music and the genre and the audience, so I knew basically, you know, what was gonna fly with the band. In about 2008, I got my first Fillmore job. It was for the band Zero. Arlene had contacted me because she knew that I worked for Zero and um, asked if I'd like to do the poster for Zero. It was great because she just basically gave me free reign. She trusted me that I knew the music and it worked for the band, it worked for the, the Fillmore, and the audience loved it. A couple jobs later that I did with Arlene, you know, there was a little bit more art direction involved uh, between her and the, you know, management of the Fillmore. I did six or seven posters for the Fillmore. Um, two of them were for the band Zero. Uh, one was for Galactic. I did one for Old Crow Medicine Show, uh, Tea Leaf Green, and Utada. In 
2006, I had my first booth at the, the Rock Poster Society annual Hall of Flowers show, and I brought along with me a lot of my own self-published work, which was basically a lot of Zero posters, a lot of Steve Kimock posters that I output as uh, high-end Jaclay prints. And luckily, I had one fan show up that day and buy up everything. And as I looked around the room, I saw these other poster artists and everything they had was silk screens. And I was like, aha, I need to get back to doing the silk screens because that seems to be what people are collecting. So I decided I was going to look up Ron Donovan, who was a classmate of mine from the CCAC. And I called him up and I was like, hey, Ron, you know, I'm, this is Dave Hunter. I don't know if you remember me. And he did. I'd, I'm kind of thinking about building my own silkscreen studio. Do you mind if I come down and visit? And he's like, sure, come on down, let's hang out. And that led to me and Ron doing quite a few collaborations over the year. Our first collaboration was a poster for the Merman. We decided to create this, this mermaid kind of goddess collage piece. And it was extremely you know, cathartic experience. We stayed up all night the first night coming up with imagery. And then we got, got our black line done. And the next day, Ron spent about 14 hours cutting the ruby list. And we, I think we got about three hours sleep. And then we started printing because the show was like the next night. Ron and I collaborated on quite a few posters over the years. We did a Crossroads Guitar Festival poster for Eric Clapton. And we also did a series of posters for the Red Vic Movie House on Hate Street. We found ourselves in a position where we had complete artistic control. In fact, the Red Vic didn't even know what they were going to end up with until we walked in with the finished product. <laughs> Collaborating with other artists is always fun. Sometimes it can be a challenge, but the synergy that happens between two artists working on a piece just elevates the whole piece of art to another level. Chuck Sperry and I worked on a collaboration piece for a band called Dark Star Orchestra, which is a tribute band to the Grateful Dead. The idea was to have this woman with sugar magnolia blossoms in her hair. He nailed the design. He sent me the sketch and as he was inking it, and it was, it was just right on. So I did the lettering overlay on top of that, and I did all the color separations. My first financially successful poster was doing a poster for Sly and the Family Stone at the Wells Fargo Center in Santa Rosa. And shortly after that, Chuck Sperry invited me to do a poster for the Decemberist. So the Decemberist poster has a lot of vibrating, you know, radial lines coming out from the center and underneath the lettering, it's, it's got a sort of a distressed look to it. I try to give my posters texture and depth and it's kind of been one of my trademarks. It's what people really like about collecting my art. When I was designing the Decemberist poster, I also started thinking about different types of substrates that I could print on. I ran about 25 on a sparkle foil paper that's kind of got a holographic look to it. And it made the piece of art completely different from the regular edition of posters. Experimenting with different substrates and the, and the inks that I was using was, was like a whole new area for me to go in and play with. You know, how's the ink gonna react if I print it on a piece of gold paper? Or how's it gonna react if I print it on a piece of blue paper? For me, it was a real creative process to start working with variants. A couple years ago, I was asked by the Marin History Museum to create a poster for a concert that was gonna benefit the Marin Rocks exhibit, which was gonna be Marin County's Rock and Roll Museum. The bands were Metallica and Moon Alice. When it came down to designing the poster, I was pretty much given, you know, the green light just to do something cool, make it heavy metal. My idea for the Metallica poster was to have this, this griffin kind of reaching up and pulling off the lightning bolt that was part of the Metallica logo. I was contacted by High Fidelity Entertainment, which is a merchandising company. I had previously shown them my work, and they asked me if I'd be interested in doing a tour poster for Carlos Santana. So Carlos, being a real spiritual guy, I wanted some sort of spiritual imagery, and we kind of threw some ideas back and forth, and I came up with a concept which I verbally described him, and he was like, go for it. It was probably one of the most seamless and easy jobs that I had done for, you know, a band of that magnitude. By the late 2000s, my art started becoming really well received. I've been able to support myself and my daughter, and I've done work for artists, 
festivals and promoters, including Westfest, Carlos Santana, The Decemberists, Primus, The Black Keys, Eric Clapton, Jane's Addiction. In 2008, I did my first Moon Alice poster. Moon Alice was touring with Tea Leaf Green, and I wanted to come up with some sort of concept that worked for both bands visually. That first poster I did for the band was well received, and it led on, led on to the next poster and the next poster, and I think we're like at the 18 or 20 mark now for the posters I've done for them. The cool thing about Moon Alice is that the name itself evokes such so many possibilities for imagery, and the, you know the possibilities are kind of infinite. The piece I like the most I've done for Moon Alice was a show that they did with Colonel Bruce Hampton. And it's basically a VU meter that's been mounted on a piece of wood. It has a real photorealistic look to it. Another piece that I really liked that I did for Moon Alice was a, a show at the 8x10 Club. I wanted to do a tribute basically to Victor Moscoso and his color schemes. The poster I did for Slims was really cool because it was their 420 festival, which is April 20th, which usually has a marijuana theme. The cool thing about the 420 poster for Moon Alice is that all the artists that are in the Moon Alice series do a poster for that night. And when you lay them all out, it's amazing to see what each different artist comes up with and how different and varying are, but they all seem to tie together with this common theme. Taking the Moon Alice poster series out on the road is just a gas. So, you know, we get to travel to a new city, get to hang out as artist friends together, go out to restaurants, and then we go to do the gig. You know, we all pitch in and help out. We hang over 400 posters. The band is playing while we're showing off the art. People show up, some of these people have never even seen Moon Alice before and they walk in and it's like this wow moment where there's all these posters and there's this huge visual impact. It's like this massive input of visual imagery. A lot of the artists that are doing this are friends of mine also. And it's really cool to take a look and see what the latest poster has been done, you know, what David Singer's doing how other artists have incorporated his awesome logo that he created for the band, what Carolyn's been up to, what Chris has done, what his latest kooky idea is. Being involved with the other artists is like this awesome, friendly camaraderie that we have going on. And it really helps me to take my art to the next level. You know, and the idea is to keep evolving as an artist.